But then I'd just like to, to welcome everyone uh, to uh, today's webinar. Uh, this is an informal opportunity to uh, exchange some knowledge between our organizations, get to know a bit about uh, how our different programs uh, work uh, and what the work the ICLD does in Eastern Africa. And also an opportunity, first, first and foremost, to meet also a, a panel of some of the change makers who actually work in local governments uh, in ICLD programs here in, in Kenya and uh, Uganda and in Sweden. So we are joined by, by them today. Uh, so this is an opportunity to, to be a bit more uh, informed about the work before our uh, upcoming uh, collaboration that I think will uh, uh, intensify even more and more now that we, we are collaborating in the Climate Network and looking at some options about it to collaborate in Rwanda as well. Uh, I'll start by leaving the floor to uh, uh, Mr. Philip uh, Osano. Uh, please. Thank you so much, Joel. Can you hear me? Yes. Great, great. So thank you so much, Joel and, and Ramanus for putting this together. And uh, uh, let me first recognize Johan Ijat, the director of ICDLP. Um, we are really very happy as uh, Stockholm Environment Institute to co-host this webinar today. Um, it is um, for me my real pleasure because this is a discussion we've had for some time and to see it coming into reality is, is something that's exciting because it, it, it speaks to a lot of opportunities that we have around collaboration, um, but also speaks to a lot of things which are important to us. Um, many of you, of course, know that um, Africa is one of the fastest urbanizing regions in the world. Um, at the same time, uh, Africa is urbanizing during a period when we also have to deal with major, major environment challenges. Uh, you know, we talk about the trip of uh, planetary crisis. We have challenges of uh, biodiversity loss, which are linked to issues around uh, having more people within our urban centers, having access to to nature uh, that is declining uh, rapidly and is a, an area of concern. We have major challenges to do with uh, pollution and waste management. Um, many cities uh, across the region, of course, are struggling with you know, massive waste and how to make sure that uh, that is managed sustainably. Um, and of course, our third area, which is of course now very critical to everyone is, is the challenge of climate change. Um, and cities, of course, uh, as cities grow, there are also the major sources of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, but at the same time, uh, climate change is creating a lot more challenges when it comes to urban planning, issues of disaster risk, water access, and, 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 and this kind of challenges. So, so that speaks to why we are doing this um, uh, webinar together. Uh, Stockholm Environment Institute, the Africa Center here is based in Nairobi. Uh, we focus really on th three broad areas. So two of those are very important, which is, you know, uh, energy and climate change and also sustainable urbanization, which is uh, the program that's being led uh, by my colleague Romanus uh, Opio, uh, who is uh, co-hosting this uh, webinar together with Joel. So I just wanted to emphasize that um, it's become very important for us to provide platforms where there's, uh, you know, uh, reflections around what we are doing, uh, particularly, of course, trying to understand how the research that we do can help inform policy, and most importantly, also enable decisions uh, around actions by uh, government and local authorities. This is one of those platforms where we would like to you know, reveal that. But most importantly, also, we realize there's quite a, um, a lot of value in terms of uh, exchange, exchange of experiences. Um, in this situation, we are quite privileged to have our colleagues from Wasingishu, our colleagues from Entebbe, and our colleagues from non chopping because then we're having a platform that allows a south-south exchange of experience and north-south exchange of experience, because some of these challenges are very common. So with that, I would uh, not take much time just to thank uh, all the colleagues that have been able to join today. Um, and uh, welcome, uh, welcome you. I'm obviously also looking forward to the rich discussion that is coming up, and to thank uh, our colleagues also um, from ICLD for the wonderful partnership that we are we are building, and of course our colleagues from the cities that will be sharing lessons today. I'm looking forward to also really learn what's going on um, on the ground. Thank you so much, and uh, back to you, Joel. Thank you, Philip. And I'll leave the floor to uh, uh, Mr. Johan Lilia. Thank you so much, Johan. And thank you, Philip uh, Osano, which is the center director of the uh, Stockholm Environment Institute in Africa. 
we had a good dialogue in, in January and now we are materializing a little bit of this collaboration also with this initiative that you have taken with this webinar. I believe this is really a, an opportunity to strengthen the ties and the collaboration between uh, Stockholm Environment Institute Africa and ICLD. For us all, I think this is a valuable occasion to get insight into to, uh, each other's work and meet some of the change agents, uh, which is the local um, governments. Uh, and that is also, uh, so to say, the ones who really work with the challenges around the local democracy and the environment. So I look forward to this and it's really exciting to be part of this event. So let me take an important note at the start of this event. The time, as we said, to act is now. And the local democracies plays an important role to make it happen. And it's more and more recognized also by the UN, as well as many national governments, that the local governments are the key. Climate change, raising conflicts, and the decline democracy index put the world with all its citizens in an enormous risk, short term as well as long term. And that can jeopardize all the efforts to become a sustainable world. So to invest in twinning projects between municipalities that are learning from each other, but also adding the component of external competences, such the ones provided by organizations such as Stockholm Environment Institutes creates a platform for tangible and concrete change and development to happen. And that is exactly what the world needs. So I am really grateful for the partnership with SEI and I'm convinced and really, really confident in that we will be able to contribute to each other's mission and I know that we can achieve great results together. So local democracy that adheres to core values of participation, equity, transparency, and accountability can make a difference for citizens that, are they, that the local governments are there to and position to serve. So I look forward now to listen to all the panelists with all their different experiences. And I want to underline again, thank you for all of you who are participating in this um, um, panel, uh, both from SCI as well as from ICD, but most so from the different municipalities who will share their experiences. With those words, I hand back to you again, uh, Johan. Thank you. Thank you, Johan and uh, Philip. <clears throat> And uh, I also forgot to introduce myself. I did that. I did that in the beginning, but not when everyone was here. So my name is Joel Vanishon, and I work as quality assurance manager for the ICLD. I usually sit in our office in Visby, which is uh, on the island of Gotland, a, uh, um, Sweden's largest island outside the Baltic Sea coast. But during this month, I've been uh, um, visiting the SCI uh, Africa office here, and I have a, I've had a guest office here, and have been very graciously uh, received by, by Philip and Romanus and colleagues. So thank you for that. Uh, the agenda for today is that we, following these introductions, uh, we will now hear from uh, Romanus, who will give an overview about the uh, work of SCI Africa and the Eastern Africa region. I will then give a walkthrough of uh, what the ICLD does in, uh, uh, in Eastern Africa and also uh, explain a bit more concretely how our municipal partnership program, the twinning program, uh, works in practice and how, how projects are planned. Then we'll go to the panel discussion. But with that said, uh, Romanus, uh, I leave the, the floor to you. Go ahead. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Joel. Also, let me just join also my colleague, uh, Philip welcoming you so we are really happy to be with you here and also i just want to acknowledge my colleague nelson ekane who has very very instrumental in linking uh, sci and what icld is doing so i'll just do an, a small a short overview a, a snapshot of some of the work we are doing especially in the urban front huh? since uh, our work will be to look at the twinning so i was just trying to set ground for some of the work we're doing under uh, sustainable financial program. As Philip had uh, highlighted earlier, we have other two programs. In the Africa Center, we have three programs. Right? We have natural resources and ecosystem. 
you know, nature is the mother of everything. So even urban areas is within the nature. So that's the mother of all our programs. Then under the nature, over the nature, we have now the sustainable urbanization and also we have climate change and energy. So those are the three programs. So for the purpose of this particular webinar or dialogue, I'll focus on the works we are doing under sustainable urbanization. So I'll just, let me just hope you can see the slides. Let me do the slideshow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so currently I'm leading the sustainable urbanization program and uh, I'll just give some of the highlights of some of the work we are doing. This is one of the one of the projects called City Health and Wellbeing, which uh, is short and chew, which we are doing in Nakuru, and we are keen to look at how the shaping urban areas are actually affecting is affecting people's health and well-being. So this is a study we are doing in Nakuru in Kenya, but also in Udonthani in Thailand, we're focusing in secondary cities. As you know, most of the urbanization happen in the secondary cities. The primary, the primary cities are already developed and may, may, maybe there's no more space to, to bring in more people in those particular urban space. So that's one of the projects we are doing in Kenya. And Nakuru is one of, is the fourth largest city in Kenya. It's the youngest city in Kenya. It was given a city status in December, 2021. So it's hardly two years old in terms of official city status. The, another project is on the, is some work we are doing in Dar es Salaam. We are doing the based on air quality, air quality study survey in, in Dar es Salaam. And uh, it's something which is also very interesting to see how do we engage with other partners. And here we are engaging with Dar es Salaam Institute of Technology just to build capacity and work with the capacity of, of, of partners so that we are able to look at the sustainability of this particular project. So this uh, is a study which we are focusing in the five municipalities within the Dar es Salaam, uh, Dar es Salaam city. So it's something which we are almost we are almost winding up this particular project, but now we are working on the sustainability component of it so that it can go beyond the, the project phase. And then the, the third project, which I, I just wanted to look at is the equi equitable mobility project, which we are focusing in two cities in Nairobi, in Kenya, Nairobi and Mombasa. And here we are looking at the mobility needs of people who are living uh, with vulnerability, the vulnerable, mobility needs of the vulnerable community. The vulnerable community here are looking at people living with disability, we are looking at the elderly, we are looking at the children, and people, the urban poor, who might have difficulty in moving from one point to another. And here, we are looking at how do we engage people so that the users of those mobility infrastructure are able to connect with the professionals, the transport engineers, the urban planners to understand their needs so that when we are designing this kind of solution, we take into account their needs in those particular in those particular area as we uh, as we ex extend the mobility infrastructure in our cities. The fourth one is the project we are doing and uh, we did in Senegal and Cote d'Ivoire, which we are looking at the national determined contribution implementation. And here we are using the issue of waste as an entry point to look at how does it contribute to the NDC for Senegal and Cote d'Ivoire. So this is also an area where we think is very important as a coverage of what we are doing. And then the fifth one is the disaster displacement, which we are also working in Ivasha town, uh, which is one of the town within the Rift Valley. And we are looking at how the issue of uh, weather pattern, also this and particular weather pattern, how, do, how it, uh, it affects people living around the, the Lake Naivasha area. So this is just a, a snapshot of what, we, of what we are doing. I know my colleague Nelson might uh, later talk about some of the work he's been leading in, 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 in Rwanda and also in, Taz in, in, in Tanzania, just you can also talk of that. But uh, in, in a snapshot, this is just what uh, I wanted to, to, uh, to, to share. So this is the city health and well-being. We just look at how different languages profile people's health and well-being in Akuru. And here you can look at some of the open spaces, green open spaces on what we have. This is one of the open space we have within the CBD called Nyayo Gardens. And also we look at the other, other areas, yeah? the, the, the mall. And we are trying to measure the air quality between different land uses. And we find the commercial areas, because the way it attracts motorized transport, it actually contributes to a higher pollution in, within the resident who use that particular area, as compared to an, to an open green space which has a lesser air pollution that area. So this also look at how do we balance different land uses. Of course, there are demand for a lot of land uses 
but we need to balance to ensure that even as we expand, we also take into account those particular measures. Yeah. So this is just some of the sensors. Yeah. The 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 low cost uh, air quality sensors just to measure the air quality in those particular areas. And also we are using also the heart rate variability watch, look at the physiological in terms of how people feel stress as they move around the city in different land diseases. So this is the work we are doing also in Dar Salaam. Uh, this is why we are looking at the issue, issue, issue of uh, particulate matter, uh, pollution, look at PM 2.5 and also PM 10. And this is just a table showing the areas where they are concerned. The red showing areas which are, which are beyond the, the recommended the, the recurrent level of air quality of PM2.5 and PM10 by WHO standards, which shows the kind of pollution we have in those particular areas. So this show concern. If you look at the other five municipalities, you see some reddish or some brownish, which shows they have some concern in terms of the air quality level in those particular areas. So we had uh, the, the ground measurements using the, the air, purple, uh, air, 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 air purple sensors and also some of the sensors which were which were actually assembled by our partner, the uh, Salam Institute of Technology. And on the right side, we have the, the remote senses, uh, remote sensing data, just measuring the, the remote sensing data and the ground measurement data. And actually, there was some similarity in terms of the areas of concern about the air quality based on the ground measurements and the air quality data. This is just some, uh, an example of what we're doing, uh, we doing in, in the Salam. So this is the air quality, the, the critical mobility, which we did in uh, Madare, which is one of the informal settlements in Nairobi, and Likoni, which is one of the informal settlements in, in Mombasa. And here we are also trying to look at the profile of, um, of how people perceive uh, the issue of safety and also the, me the ground measurement, to see the perception and ground measurement. And at times we find that there's a match between how people feel about certain areas in terms of the air quality and safety as compared also to the, the, gr the ground measurement. So this is just uh, so one, of the, one of the work we're doing in Nairobi and Mombasa. So the NDC work, uh, we are, the SCI, we are supporting the component three, where we are providing technical assistance to count the installation and running of the biogas and compost uh, plant. And uh, this is just uh, the, the project uh, in Cote d'Ivoire and Senegal, in terms of look at how the, the installation was done. And so engagement of various people, various players, the, the local authority, and also the community, in terms of how they should be able to address this by 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 ability to estimate some of the greenhouse gases emission in that particular area to see how that also contributes to the reduction of them in the meeting of the NDC in this particular uh, in these particular two countries so this is the, the fifth year project which is the disaster displacement in Evasha and here we are trying to look at how people feel about their areas and how they feel in terms of uh, the 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 the, the the extension of the lake and how the water level is actually affecting li livelihood, especially the, the 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 women, the children, and all how this also impacts impacts on their health. So this is very important in terms of helping the policymakers to appreciate evidence based uh, evidence based decision making by collecting information in terms of how in future we should be able to approach this in terms of addressing such kind of disasters and also by picking. The uh, key variability factors for this particular area. Yeah. So also in SCI, I just also wanted for that. Apart from the project we are doing, we also have some tools which can be very important because we have the partners here from the local authorities, both in both in um, in Africa and, uh, and 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 from and from Sweden. So these are some of the tools which uh, we can also share with our partners. Uh, one is the river, which can help actually planners. To estimate the resource and the use of potential available in a city's wastewater and other. It's very it's a very powerful tool. And uh, if you get time, you can also engage with it from the from, from our website to see deeper in terms of how it can work. Also, recently we have an urban toolbox, also which also have in decision making and also looking at the co-design element in terms of bringing people, and we are talking about democratic space and local governance. It's a very important tool in terms of how do we engage the decision makers, the community in coming up with safe and inclusive urban spaces. So this is uh, one of the tools which also you can consider uh, looking and seeing how it can help us in terms of decision making and working around. And then we have the CDS, SDG synergies, which also are a very important tool for looking at how all the, uh, as you make your targets in SDGs, you see how, how one target can also help in achieving other targets in terms of look at the synergies 
between the SDG targets uh, in different areas. So this is just one of the, some of the few tools which I just wanted to highlight as part of what SCI can offer and what we are using to help her in, in, in our spaces. So lastly, in terms of policy intervention, because you know we do the research to inform policy and decision making. And uh, using just the lens of the ICLD in terms of urban governance, I think it's very important to look at how urban, urban governance and also city development takes place and how do you also engage in terms of city, uh, in terms of citizen science? How do we bring people on board to ensure that we address uh, their needs and also we are able to work with them as we make decisions and change spaces and even the leaders, it's very important to have them in those particular areas. And then lastly, we also look at how, how we lead the results and also the uptake of, of those results to inform decision making and more important, shaping the policy landscape and development in different areas. So these are very key things where SCI, we are keen in terms of how do we work with users of our, of our needs or of our research or the people who are likely to benefit from research interventions and also use of our tools and it shows how we move around and how we, we, we inform that. So I just want to clear finish with this by just uh, highlighting that uh, it does look at some of the key issues, especially for the future urban, 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 urban growth. Yeah? And we thought that from the land users perspective, it's important to look at the energy sector. How do we handle this particular sector? Residential, because there will be demand for residential as urban areas uh, increases. So to very fact, look at how do we plan for this particular area? How do we engage different stakeholders in this particular area? Waste management, because of course, as we as we, as we increase population, as we increase demand, we also increase consumption, which also increase the issue of the waste. So it's very important. Look at how do we handle this particular area? Also, transport is very important because we you know of its contribution to the pollution. So how do we manage this? And lastly, the urban agriculture, because our, our urban spaces is eating up to peri urban areas, which has an impact on our agricultural land uses. So this will become very important, even as we twin, as, as we understand this particular aspect, to see how do we focus our energy in sorting out this particular sector. And of course, I can't I forget the industrialization because we are industrializing in urban areas. It becomes an important sector as we think of this. So thank you, Joel, uh, and thanks everybody for your uh, for listening. Thank you, uh, Romanus, uh, and I think all colleagues uh, at ICLD can see that there's a lot of uh, common topics that are addressed by ICI Africa and ICLD in our projects, uh, both in terms of uh, waste management, equitable uh, mobility that you mentioned, with, especially in terms of uh, caring for vulnerable groups. I just did a training two weeks back in a public safety audit tool here in Kenya that we produced, which is one example of how we also try to convert uh, research into, into practical tools for uh, uh, for local governments, which is also a big focus for, for SAI Africa to, to use research, but to use it practically and to have, have the possibility to convert it also into policy. Um, so thank you, uh, Romanus. Um, I'm going to share my screen. And as always, I use my colleague Robin to uh, uh, tell me if I'm sharing it correctly. Yeah. Looks, Looks good. good. OK, perfect. Um, so I'm going to start by uh, just as a, a precursor to the panel, also give an overview of um, how our training program works, but focus on what projects we have in Eastern Africa. Uh, so the training program, the municipal partnership program, as we call it, is our primary program uh, in which we support collaborations between Swedish and international local governments to work for inclusive participatory local governments. They address a wide range of, of uh, topics. We will focus today on a few partnerships who address climate and environmental issues in Eastern Africa, and we'll be joined by that by the panel later. So first of all, uh, I just want to give a brief overview of the ICLD, because um, we are a relatively small organization, uh, but we have a broad footprint. So we support projects across 23 different countries. In total, we are 20 employees that are all based in Sweden, so we have no country offices in collaboration countries. And here is our, uh, our team in the picture uh, during conference in Gotland, where we have our headquarters. Uh, and while we are fully based in Sweden, we do have some local partners, uh, like program mentors and partner organizations in cooperation countries like SAI Africa. So there is a presence, but there's not a direct presence from SAI employees. Our financing comes uh, fully from uh, SIDA, uh, which as you know, is a Swedish development uh, aid agency. 
Uh, and the role that makes ICLD unique as an organization is our mandate to support Swedish local governments to engage in these twinning partnerships. And that's done through the municipal partnership program. So that is our primary focus. That program is our primary focus. But we, um, as part of supporting local governments in that program, supporting twin and twinning partnerships, we do three different things at the ICLD. Uh, we finance and enable uh, the twinning projects. Uh, we train local governments, uh, officials and politicians, and we support research into local democracy that is then used to convert the research into practice and inform decision makers in our programs. So these three approaches have historically been separate programs, but in recent years, they've been more and more tied together into a joint ICLD approach. So what's called the ICLD approach today is the use of twinning, training, and research together to support local governments in our uh, municipal partnership program. And we see that the twinning and peer-to-peer -peer learning between Swedish and African local governments can reach further and can get stronger results if we also add capacity building and relevant tools from research, but that's not how it always has been. Okay. So the partnerships uh, we have are spread out across uh, Asia, Eastern Europe, Southern Africa, uh, and East Africa. And we're also looking to engage in, in Latin America. So we have a broad engagement. But if there's one place that could be viewed as a second home for the ICLD, I think we could say it would be here, right here in Kenya. And not just because I'm here or because our Secretary General uh, and my colleague Ida Edmison used to live here, uh, but because Kenya is the largest collaboration country for the ICLD. This is the country where we have the most amount of municipal partnerships. We have 12 in total right now. Uh, which addresses a wide range of topics like waste management, youth inclusion, gender equality. And we also have uh, several local governments engaged in training programs. We have large research project, projects here in partnership with the University of Nairobi. And we also have uh, valuable partners locally like uh, SA Africa, like uh, UN Habitat, Clone Initiative, uh, et cetera, who we do activities with and strengthen capacity building. Um, if we zoom out a bit to the region, uh, we can also see, likewise, that Eastern Africa is actually uh, our largest collaboration region. Uh, it just passed Southern Africa uh, last year. So uh, we can see, uh, especially in Uganda and Tanzania, we have a, a lot of partnerships and, and projects. And we can see a big interest around the uh, environmental issues, inclusive urbanism, and climate action and to systematize the work with the sustainable development goals. So several of our partnerships revolve around making actions on those topics. And we've had, we have done several uh, research projects uh, about these topics as well. We supported a, a research project into inclusive and sustainable waste management uh, that focuses on the role of, of waste pickers in Kenya. Uh, we're just starting, starting another on participatory methods around voluntary local reviews. There's several ex exciting projects going on here, uh, and I encourage you to check out the knowledge bank at the ICLD website. You can search for the, for the Eastern African projects there. But today we will focus on the twinning partnerships in East Africa. Um, so I just want to give an overview of how they address topics around uh, climate challenges and local environmental issues. A municipal partnership uh, is a results-oriented twinning collaboration. So usually the partners do a three-year project together where they address uh, challenges that are uh, perhaps different in context, but are similar locally. So if you address waste management, you have a similar topic, but you have different kinds of challenges, and then you have exchanges and, and collaborations around that. Um, it can also be uh, increasing young people's ability to uh, influence climate, uh, climate issues, which I know Inter is uh, focused on. Uh, and the partnerships, they involve both the political level and the civil servant level. So there's always a representative of the political majority and the opposition part uh, overseeing the project and the steering group to get uh, continuity and good anchoring for the project. Uh, the partners develop their project plan together. They conduct two exchange trips per year uh, with the project group and the steering group. And during that time, they have exchange of methods, ideas, uh, best practices. And most of them also get some support from the ICLD in terms of input from research, et cetera. 
Uh, and the goal of the partnerships is to address the local issue, like waste management, by using democratic processes and to institutionalize that change. So the end result uh, of, a, of a partnership could be a new policy that's uh, implemented or a practice that's uh, changed in the local government for how to address these issues, which make it act more, more democratically uh, in line with democratic core values. So the topic itself, the topic itself for the project uh, can depend on the, the priorities of the local governments. And that also ensures some local ownerships of the priorities as well. That this is something the local government wants to address, and they do that through democratic processes. So when planning a project, the focus is to address the specific project area uh, with processes that promotes these four core values of local democracy. Um, so if you're um, planning a waste management project, for instance, here's a list of uh, examples of topics we have in our projects in, in East Africa. Uh, if you would do a project on waste management, uh, then you would plan your project uh, with your partner over a three-year period. You would do exchanges, you would uh, uh, share experiences and methods for how to address it. And the outcome could then, for instance, be a new practice or policy for how to include and treat waste pickers more equitably, formalize their role in the local government. And that would correspond to, to equity, for instance. Or the local government could try a new participatory process with their partner um, and uh, find ways to engage citizens better. Yeah. Or you could uh, promote transparency by improving communication platforms, by sharing information, or you could find new ways to uh, for complaint mechanisms, performance monitoring, etc., that corresponds to to accountability. Um, so you would address uh, these specific topics that are your priorities, but you would do it through these four, four values of uh, local democracy. That's how we plan an ICLD project. And one of our uh, upcoming initiatives, where we're uh, collaborating with uh, SA Africa to support municipal partnerships. Uh, is within our uh, new a new climate action network. So in the networks, that's basically uh, us grouping together three to five twenty partnerships working on similar projects. So they they're addressing climate topics through democratic action, democratic processes, um, but getting support in terms of, of training and expertise uh, uh, from SAI Africa to get in the ICLD. So it's a way to to find a joint way to do trainings and capacity building and also uh, uh, commission research projects uh, to that topic. Um, so one participant that we have uh, today is actually from this climate network, which is uh, the local government of Entebbe in Uganda. Um, so to make this a little bit more concrete, uh, how the training program works, uh, we've invited the panel and we will listen to some input from, from actual change makers from our projects uh, uh, in Kenya and Uganda. Let me just stop sharing the screen. Uh, so that's the basic outline of how the municipal partnership program works and what we do in Eastern Africa. Uh, but to get to the, to the more concrete part, I would like to uh, invite our panel. Uh, and for the panel, we have uh, three participants uh, who are working on topics related to environmental issues. Uh, and Nelson, you have raised your hand. Yeah, thanks, Joel. Just to just to add on, you know, what Romanus presented, um, which I think is important for you to know, and I think uh, perhaps uh, Johan and, uh, and others from ICLD uh, were informed about that in our previous meetings, is that we at SCI uh, have been also engaged in international training programs. So it has been a core part of our work over the past uh, couple of decades. So yeah. in, on different issues on uh, climate change, uh, adaptation and mitigation uh, in Western Eastern Africa, on uh, financing local uh, uh, infrastructure initiatives uh, in mostly East Africa and Southern Africa. And more, most lately it was on sustainable urban and uh, water and sanitation, integrated processes together with NERAS. So these are, I would say, uh, uh, experiences or uh, activities that would add value to uh, what we are doing at ICLD. So it's important to know there's a wide variety of actors in the region uh, that we build on. Uh, so it's uh, uh, so that we bring along with us as well. 
Yeah, and I think your your experiences in your network will be a, a perfect contribution to the work of the municipal partnerships and the transaction. So thanks for that, uh, Nelson. Um, so to invite the panel, I just want to mention first that the setup of the panel is that uh, uh, they will start with a short presentation, about three minutes each, and they will describe a bit of their work in the municipal partnership program. Um, we will then have a discussion together for about 10-15 uh, minutes and we'll open up for some follow-up questions from the panel. So please just raise your hand if you have any any questions uh, to the, and you can do that during the presentations as well. And, we'll, and I'll invite you to, to ask your question. <clears throat> so in our panel today, we have two participants from a partnership who has worked on uh, two projects actually together since uh, 2016, and they're currently in their final year. And we have one representative from a new partnership with an upcoming project who are also part of the Climate Action Network. So allow me to first introduce the participants uh, of the partnership between uh, North Shepping and Wasing Yishu. Uh, and we're happy to be joined from the Swedish side by Tora Strandberg, uh, who is an investigation engineer in environmental issues at Nodra AB, which is the municipal company for water waste and broadband in North Shepping. She's been coordinating the partnership since 2022. And we also have Jimmy Kenboy, uh, who is general manager for technical services of Eldoret Water and Sanitation Company, Eldovas. And he's been a member of the project group for the partnership since 2018. Uh, and uh, last but not least, we are also joined by Semakula Samson from Entebbe in Uganda. And he's an agricultural officer and environmental inspector, and he's been a member of the inception group for the planned upcoming projects uh, between Entebbe uh, and Kjols Kruma uh, municipality. Um, and I'd like to start by inviting uh, Tura and uh, Jimmy to uh, uh, take the floor and to give us a brief presentation and introduction of, uh, of your project. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for inviting us. I hope you all can hear me. Yeah. Uh, and I think that I'll uh, start by making a brief introduction, and then uh, Jimmy will uh, add uh, on this. Um, and we start with the beginning, that the agreement between no shopping in Eldoret in Washington County it was established in the year 2014, thanks to a former Kenyan ambassador in Sweden. Uh, it was her in uh, initiative the, um, that the thought of a partnership was planted. Uh, and together we started a dialogue of possible and uh, suitable issues to address in such a partnership. Um, in the end of um, an inception phase, uh, both parties agreed on the waste management and the project Nuvoreld, uh, that is short for North Shopping and Eldoret, started in uh, 2015. Uh, in North Shopping, both the municipality itself and Nodra, the company where I work, uh, are involved in this project. And our Kenyan partner is the Washington County. Uh, and uh, there are also several people from the municipality in Eldoret and uh, Eldovas, they are also included. Uh, and Eldovas is the, uh, um, it's likewise Nodra, uh, the same company, but in, in Eldoret. Uh, and as uh, Joel said that uh, the first part of the project it's, it ended in uh, 2019, and uh, since 2020, we work with a, a second part of this project for another three years. Uh, and due to the pandemic period, uh, it's a bit delayed. So uh, this project will finish during next year. And our overall objective is to contribute to sustainable and cleaner environment by supporting the, the administration and the inhabitants to be expert in provision of sustainable solid waste management services with adequate infrastructure based on the needs of the communities through a creation of an environment for stakeholder participation. And so far we have raised the awareness of solid waste management within the community as well as within the county and municipality. Uh, we've seen several improvements that have been made 
to strengthen the organization of waste management here, uh, especially by, by the so-called private collectors of solid waste. Man uh, solid waste. Um, they have formed a society to share and raise the knowledge of waste management to maintain a structure in the garbage collection and also to help uh, each other with loans for investments when needed. Uh, and the main objective remaining is the landfill um, in this area, how to take control and create conditions for a sustainable and good management of this landfill. Uh, here, important steps have been made, like acquisition for an extra area for sorting out items and investing in an compactor. Uh, and I think I will leave it to you, um, Jimmy, to to add add um, more about uh, the start of the project and what you've seen for such a result. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Tor. I hope you can hear me all. Yes. Yes. So uh, I totally agree what you've said so far that uh, through the project you've been able to to of course establish the partnership. But basically, maybe to go back a bit to the history is, in the year 2013, there, were, uh, there was a new constitution in this country, and therefore there was an enactment of a new constitution, a new devolved system of government came, came in, and the old municipalities were, were phased out. So during that transition, uh, the issue of solid waste management was not well managed, and there was a bit of chaos, if I would call it that uh, solid waste management in this uh, town was being managed basically by the street children, that the county government was basically on a daily basis, uh, you know, engaging the street families to do street cleaning, waste collection. So there was no proper structure in terms of uh, waste management. And at that time, the town and even the residential places was, were quite dirty. The waste, what she's calling the landfill was basically a dump site. And it was actually full, full of waste. There was no space. So the situation was actually dire. And therefore, when this partnership came into place, the main challenge was to address uh, this issue of solid waste management in, in the town. And uh, what was done was uh, basically uh, issues of sensitization, sensitization both of communities, sensitization of the staff, ourselves involved, the politicians, like Joel mentioned, that was very key because they had to, there was need to bring on board the decision makers, both in terms of staff and also the politicians, including the members of our county assemblies. So all this was done under the project and through the sensitization and the trainings that were done, there was buying and ownership uh, among us, uh, the entire populace. Um, there was also training, uh, both here in Eldoret and uh, through exchange visits. We had uh, exchange programs, uh, staff from no shopping uh, visited uh, Eldoret. Some of the staff from this town, including myself, managed to visit uh, no shopping, where we were able to see first and how you know, proper solid waste management uh, works. Uh, we've also received a lot of technical assistance and technical support. Even the, the compactor that he talked about was actually uh, as a result of the uh, support that we received from the team from no shopping including as well, uh, you know, the expansion of the sanitary landfill. The space was quite small, and therefore there was need to redesign that landfill. Uh, and the team from Shopping were quite helpful in terms of coming up with, with the design of that uh, site. Whereas it's not yet fully uh, implemented, but at least the space has been acquired and there is preliminary design in terms of what needs to be done uh, at the west site. There's also been uh, a lot of, you know, media activities involving um, sport personalities. And this has been done jointly between us and also no shopping. We've used uh, some of our athletes to do promotion of uh, solid waste management, engage the media. So this has created a lot of uh, you know uh, awareness amongst the population because of course, as you know, this country and this city itself is is is, is a city that is uh, 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 that has a lot of sport, especially athletics. So we've used our, our athletes to to promote solid waste management. And through this, also we've seen uh, the county government, especially the politicians, are, are willing now to to allocate resources. To, to management of, of solid waste. Yeah, so I would say, yes, we had a, quite a number of challenges at the beginning and through the partnerships, we have clearly been able to witness an uh, enormous change. We are still work in progress, especially at the dump site. But in terms of the town, the city is actually quite clean. There's a lot of uh, uptake. And um, 
at the moment, there are youth groups, women groups that are being involved in terms of waste collection and uh, waste uh, disposal, sorting of the waste at, at, the, at the waste uh, disposal site. So there have been a lot of improvement and uh, we're happy so far. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, and uh, I'll leave the floor to Samsung to uh, give a brief introduction of the Intego project and then we'll get to some, some questions. Samsung, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, please go ahead. Yes, yes thank you very much. Um, and uh, I thank you for having invited us to this panel. Uh, very briefly, Entebbe and uh, Carl Skrona are a young partnership, but Entebbe has been under the ICLD partnership for some time with another city, but uh, with the Carl Skrona, we are beginning a new partnership. and. Um, Basically, we are still in the inception phase and uh, we are working on the application for the for the project phase. But um, we've had the, one of the exchange visits and uh, we've got to know each other better and we're having another visit in the near future. Our project is mainly on the climate change actions, but uh, specifically looking at the school children because we believe that uh, in a couple of years, 10, 15 years, these school children will be taking over everything, management of the cities. So we are trying to prepare a new group of people and they're trying to, to define climate change to them and make sure they understand it right from an early stage so that we, we inculcate the, the idea in their minds quickly. And um, this is, um, this was uh, initiated because of the, the similarities you have between Entebbe and Carl's Corner. We are all kind of peninsulas in two water bodies. I was Lake Victoria and the Baltic Sea in, in Europe. And uh, we had similar effects or challenges climate related. One was the, the rise in the sea levels, which affected uh, us in very many ways. It affected mobility in our two cities. It affected fishing, which is a major activity in our cities. It affected education. These children couldn't go to school because of the, the rise in the lake levels. It affected health services. It affected agriculture in the urban areas because our town depends a lot on urban agriculture. So we thought these, uh, these cemeteries will help us to come to a similar project, and they have. So we have defined our problem now and we are working on our application. So basically that is our project and we are looking forward to this project and we thank ICLD for the support rendered for her for so far, technical. And uh, I think uh, by the end of, 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 of uh, August, we shall be able to submit our application for further processing. Thank you very much, Joel. Thank you, Samson. Uh, we'll get to some questions now to the panel. Uh, and uh, if anyone has, uh, has thought of a question, you can please raise your hand. Uh, and I'll, I'll start by posting some questions, but just please uh, put up your hand if there's something that comes to mind. Um, I wanted to start with a question to Tura and uh, Jimmy. Um, so you mentioned some things that you've been learning from each other uh, that's been a benefit to the project, some very concrete things. Uh, you've been working together on this uh, project since 2016. So I just wanted to ask, what, what does it mean for the project to have a partner working alongside with you? Like, how does that uh, like, uh, benefit the work? And how has the, since you've worked for several years together, how has the peer-to-peer -peer learning and exchange to develop to, over time between your work guidance? So Jimmy, Jimmy or Tura? Yeah. Jimmy has been since 2018, so yeah. well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Joy. Like, I, I can actually respond. Yeah, I mean, it's developed over time. Like I mentioned, it started first, of course, by identifying what the real problem was, the challenges that were there on the ground. And the partnership really, the teams worked together to look at what were the real challenges and what were the possible solutions in terms of what needed to be to be done. 
of course, looking at the constraints that were there at uh, that point in time, of course, the political will, the, the, the county government was new. There were, you know, challenges of resources. Uh, the dam site was, there was no space. There was basically no structure. So there was need to first identify the problem, develop, you know, a, a work plan in terms of what needed to be done and what needed to be done when, the resources that were required, who was to do what, and then the issue of, you know, actually programs, training and sensitization. Once that was done, then there was the issue of uh, uh, sharing of ideas, comparing what was being done in no shopping to see what could actually be imported, what could be borrowed from no shopping to be uh, done here. And thereafter, there was now the element of the, 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 the actual implementation. And uh, here, having done the sensitization, especially of the political class, there was goodwill from all the stakeholders. And therefore, when we went to the community to talk to the members of the public, to talk to youth, women, and uh, several groups, there was a lot of positive reception in terms of uh, uh, the project implementation and the ideas that were being brought on board. And then uh, lastly, uh, you know, the issue of the necessary equipment, looking at, uh, you know, the compactor, what needed to be done at the site, uh, the staff, capacity building, the trainings, the capacity. In fact, there was also a recommendation to recruit new staff. Because as, like I said before, uh, there were no staff. The solid waste management function was basically being done through the, the, the street children, and therefore there were no skills there. So at the beginning, there was need to bring on board uh, skilled uh, personnel who would be able to really run, run, run uh, the systems. And uh, after that was done, uh, the trainings were done, and then uh, of course uh, acquisition of the additional uh, site, acquisition of the equipment. Uh, then now we are in the phase of doing uh, monitoring and, and, and evaluation. And I would say uh, so far it's been quite uh, encouraging. Yeah, I don't know if Tora needs to add something. <laughs> um thank you jimmy i i think of this um uh, as you said it's been a it's uh, it's been quite a journey from the beginning uh, to, to now and what we learned by comparing how you had um how the organization um for for handling the waste management uh in washington issue compared to how it's um handled in the, in the no shopping um there were many differences, uh, but for example, we could see that Nudra, uh, the company where I work, we we are the the company dealing with uh, water and sanitation, uh, but we're also dealing with the waste. We we are um, we are the one managing the solid waste in North Shipping, and uh, Jimmy's company Eldoas, they they are do, doing the exact same thing that we do. Uh, regarding water and uh, sanitation, but they don't have uh, the waste management. And but uh, during these discussions, you, <laughs> you, you could, uh, and your uh, your colleagues, you could see that this this could easily fit into our our work. It could fit in our organization, and it, the, that that was uh, quite interesting to see. Uh, both for 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 the colleagues in the both companies, but also for our politicians, both in Sweden uh, in Norshipping and in the Washington issue county, because uh, the possibility to add the waste management into your company it was already there, right? Uh, but it hadn't uh, been implemented. Um, so this is something that been go that has been going on for for a few years now uh, to see if it could actually be be implemented for real. Um, so that is one of the um, big discussions that we have had, um, and also a question how to finance. Um, the collection of waste. In no shopping, we from from Nodra, we send a bill for the water to our customers, and we also have send a bill for collecting waste to our customers. Uh, customers, and that is also that we've been discussing with you because your Eldoras is the 
company in Eldoret to send the bill for the water. And maybe this could be the ground for, for adding um, um, the fee for, for um, collect, uh, collecting the garbage as well. Um, but these kind of structure, what's called structure, uh, organizational changes, uh, it takes often time. So it's good to have these projects for, for a few years because you have to have the time to both have the starting discussion, the, the really um, uh, deep discussion, and then to um, implement it in the end. So you need, you need time for these changes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and that's also something that's uh, part of, like an important part of every ICL the exchange that you do these projects over a period of time and you try to institutionalize the change into the organization. But before before I get to some, so I just want to follow up with uh, uh, with Jimmy. So, uh, like following the completion of your project since it's ending soon, like how do you work to ensure sustainability of results uh, that you contributed to with the project? So you see that. Things you've learned and changes you've done are still in place in a few years following the the, the, the completion of the project. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Joel. And I would want to agree with uh, what Tora said that uh, one of the biggest discussions that we've had so far has been the transfer of the solid waste management function from the county government of Wasingishu to Eldoret Water and Sanitation. That's Eldoret. This has not happened so far because uh, one of the challenges that we've had and Tora has mentioned is. It has taken a bit of time. Uh, last year, there was change of government. So we have a new governor in place, new uh, political leadership in place. And therefore, that discussion has been put on hold because then we need to restart again to sensitize the new team, to bring them on board. But it's one of the key ideas that we feel that needs to be implemented for us to sustain the gains that we've made so far, that the function of solid waste management be transferred to elders, similar to what is being done in Nudra. And if that is done, it will be able to, we will be able to manage it in a sustainable manner because we will be able to collect, to bill for the service through the same way we do for the water and the sewage services. And if that is done, of course, the institution of elders will be able to manage that function. And it already has the structures all the way to the community level. The other way we would basically do is, of course, to inculcate the issue of continuous community sensitization so it does not become a project-based uh, activity, but it should be a continuous activity that is goes hand in hand with solid waste management. That the community must be continuously sensitized and uh, training and be uh, you know encouraged to be part and parcel of environmental protection. That solid waste management is part of uh, environmental protection. And as we're discussing matters of climate change, sustainable development, this should be part and parcel of, of the discussion that we have with our communities. It should also be, of course, continuation of this uh, cleanup campaigns. We currently have monthly cleanup campaigns. This should continue and should be part and parcel of, 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 of what we do in, in, in this city so that this does not become just like project based, but it's something part and parcel of, you know, our way of living in this in this town. And of course, uh, like I said, when they, whenever there is change of guard and change of leadership, there should be uh, training, sensitization, so that there is continuity and there is no stoppage of, of activities. Then uh, lastly is monitoring and evaluation that we put in place a structured system of monitoring and evaluating, of course, the solid waste management function, all the way from uh, starting from the collection, transportation, all the way to the disposal site. And uh, the aspect of, you know, resource uh, issue, of recycling, reuse uh, of, of whatever resources that are available in, 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 in the waste. And lastly is, of course, uh, development of standard of operating procedures so that the institution can have standard of operating procedure of managing solid waste. It will not be dependent on people, but it is institu institutionalized uh, within the institution. Those would be my comments. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, several yeah. good examples of institutionalizing change in the organization. But you were speaking about the topic of ensuring political support also for the project. So I would like to uh, pass on the question to you, Samson. Uh, have you had such discussions in your partnerships about like, ensuring political support and how do you how do you ensure political support uh, possibilities to mobilize staff and resources that might be needed for for the project to uh, to keep the keep the work moving forward Samson, have you had any such discussions yet
Samson, are you with us? Hello. Yes, I'm with you. Yeah. So how can you ensure yes, political so support for st staffing resources, et cetera, for your project? Have you had such discussions yet? Please go ahead. My connection is a bit bad. Can you come again? Sorry. So how can you ensure support for the project at the political level also in Entebbe in terms of if there's funds you need to uh, mobilize or there's staffing resources to, to keep the project moving forward? How do you involve the politicians? Okay, thank you very much. We are, we are some of the activities we are going to do are the rely, rely on the normal activities, especially in the schools. We are not changing much in the schools, but um, we expect some technical input and support from our partners. We are, we are borrowing some ideas from what they are doing well, and they, they are also borrowing what we are doing well. So it will not be um, intensive financially to, to run the project, but um, still there is need for some funding here and there, like in the exchange, exchange uh, the, the, the peer visits and, and things like that. So those ones will need some funding, definitely. But the activities on the ground, more, most of them are recurrent and the normal things we are doing, or like on a day-to-day -day basis. And we, have, we are going to put in uh, time as in the resource, human resource. We have the teachers, we have the champions, environmental champions, and things like that. So the, the, the human resource will be available. And the time, we are going to put in some more time. And then the, um, the normal educational programs in the schools. Thank you, Samson. So I'd be happy to uh, open up the floor for any questions from uh, the colleagues at SAI Africa. Um, I can otherwise continue. I have several more questions, but uh, I want to give the opportunity also if there's, uh, if there's a question from uh, Philip or Romanus or other colleagues. Yeah, Romanus, please go ahead. Uh, thanks, Joel. And uh, I want to just also commend the team for the for sharing this. Maybe just two 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 questions. One to one to Jimmy on the on the landfill size, huh? because uh, a lot of it's also expanding. I don't know what kind of projection they have for waste management, sustainable waste management, in terms of what you do see as a adequate size for a landfill, which we can able to 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 bring in the new the new knowledge and capacity given by through the training program. And then secondly to Samson, the, my second question is to Samson. Samson uh, said uh, Entebbe has had a previous experience in twinning. So what was the experience of the farm? Because Cascrona seems to be a new experience. What was the, what is the experience of the old one, the old uh, twinning program and which, which city were you twinning and what have you been, how have you benefited with the old one? Thank you. Yeah, so thanks for the question. Should I respond? Let's go ahead. Yeah, so in terms of the size of, of the landfill, initially we had a, a small area, less than five acres of, of land that was available and it was actually quite full. So through, through the partnership, we, we were able to, of course, project how much waste is likely to be, to be collected in the next couple of years. But then one of the things that came out from, from the team initial assessment was, of course, whereas the existing site was full, it was full basically because the waste was being basically dumped uh, loosely. So there was no compaction. And from the advice of the team from uh, No Shopping was, if we were to get the compactor and compact the waste, we would be able to, to, to reduce whatever was being used from the five acres to almost a third of it. And it's what is now currently going on, where we are compacting the waste at the uh, existing landfill so as to get additional space. But then, of course, there was also need to now acquire additional space to, to allow for sorting and uh, doing other activities and also for future expansion. So the land size was expanded from the then five acres to the now almost 13 acres of land that uh, the team and everybody feels is, is, is sufficient for now. Maybe for future, there will be need to look for an alternative site once this is filled up. Yeah, over to you. May, may, I, may I add a few things there? Yes, yes. 
as uh, as uh, Jimmy said, uh, if if a landfill is properly managed, uh, if you have a plan for where to where to where the garbage come in, how to compact it, and how to uh, actually just manage the whole landfill like, uh, like you can have a you can have a chaotic desk at your office or you can have a tidy office uh, uh, desk and it's the same size it's the same with the with the with the landfill it can feel uh, overfull or, or it can be a lot of uh, space left it 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 depends on how how you structure and uh, plan for adding uh, more um, more garbage and and that's why we are continuously uh, continue um, um, that's that's what we're working uh, with now how to to plan it to 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 last for at least 15 more years thank you Samsung, there was a question about the uh, previous partnerships you had I don't know if you were involved in that but do you know like uh, what were the lessons learned from the previous partnership? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Our previous uh, partnership was with the city called Kalma. It's in the south as well, on the southeast of Sweden. And um, our flagship project was uh, on waste management. I think this was one of our best projects we've had ever since. And uh, it revolutionized the way we handle waste in our town. Because one thing we learned is that you, you, you cannot go Waste alone, because in Kalma there, there are seven cities handling waste together. So that's one thing we've also learned that you cannot go waste alone. So what they do, they share the responsibilities. One one city handles plastics, one city handles wood, and that city handles metal. So they divided the waste responsibility amongst themselves. And um, we are also trying to do that in our region here in in, in Uganda. We are we are so far we are four cities. We are trying to to come together to handle our waste. And uh, we may be we may be funded by the European Union, but our application is still being had. So we think also we can do waste with our neighbors, with our four neighbors. Somebody handles plastic, somebody handles organic, somebody handles something wood or something. So we think we can also do that, and we've uh, we've borrowed that from 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 this city. And uh, they have also taught us about uh, what, what we've learned from that cooperation was. Uh, Waste. If you must handle waste every day, if you if you if you have markets and shops and schools open every day, then you also have to handle waste every day as a as a city managers. So provided the markets are open, they they will always be waste in London, in Russia, in in Nairobi, in Dar es Salaam, everywhere. Provided the markets are open and the shops, there's gonna be waste everywhere. And if you don't handle it one day. London will look like Entebbe, Entebbe will look like Kisumu. So the waste is a common is, is a common issue. So we, we were also taught about the we learned about the equipment. It's very equipment is very important in waste management. The equipment has to be efficient. So we've done away with the skip loaders and things like that. We are now using compactors which are more efficient. And uh, I think our cities are a bit cleaner these days because of that cooperation. And we appreciate that cooperation quite a lot. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. So uh, we are soon running out of time, uh, but let's pick up the final two questions uh, one at a time now by Nelson and then Philip. So Nelson, please uh, go ahead. Thanks, Joel. I think it's a very interesting discussions here and very inspiring. Actually, it echoes a lot of the things that I, I heard at, uh, in Tanzania last week where we joined in this uh, WASH thematic working group meeting. And then this, this aspect of stakeholder engagement is of particular interest here. And, uh, and it's part of the thing that we, we at SCI actually are uh, emphasizing in our work now, and, and part of the project that I have with uh, the expert group for age studies. Uh, it will be interesting to get your reflection on how this how actually happens at different levels uh, in both Kenya and Uganda, you know, both the expert level with the line ministries, as well as uh, uh, at the lower level there between the, the implementers and the households, because then uh, this pertains to aspects of sustainability, uh, dignity, and, and uh, of course, uh, capacity, because sorting is not only going to happen 
at the landfill, sorting can happen at the household level. And that is something that Sweden actually does quite well. Um, then another issue there would be, uh, like Jimmy mentioned, uh, you know, uh, or it was it Samson that mentioned a copy. I think context matters uh, a lot, um, uh, you know, and planning. So we, we can't just copy. So there are specificities in, in the African cities or African settings that you wouldn't find. So it will be sharing. So I think, uh, are there any things that you have been able to share successfully with the uh, municipalities in, in Sweden? That is, uh, that they have learned from you and you've learned from them. So I think uh, in that sense, uh, any reflections on what you've been able to share? Thanks, Joel. Thank you, Nelson. Um, I'll leave that to, because that's a question both to uh, uh, Samson and Jimmy maybe, and also to Tura. So I'll leave it to any of you to pick up the question. Maybe I can go. Yeah, so uh, in terms of the stakeholder engagement, I would wish to say that uh, it's it's a very sensitive uh, point that if not done well, it can easily kill the enti entire project. But how it worked for us is it started from the top where um, there was engagement at the top, the then governor and the, the ambassador and uh, a number of senior people there was engagement at that level. And when once there was buy-in from that level of the governor, then he took it down to the politicians uh, who in our case were the members of the county, county assembly, who also saw the need and, and the challenge that was there uh, at that point in time. Once that set of team was uh, now convinced, the second level was now the, the, the staff who, who are in charge of, of this function. And there was sensitization and training uh, on that area. And once all these groups were now on board, there was now uh, the last level where uh, everybody went to the community, all the leadership, political leadership and staff, all of them together, we all went down to the community and now we had constructive engagement. And so using that uh, you know, structured uh, stakeholder engagement, there was buy-in at different levels, but by the time we went to the community, then there was no, you know, any resistance, if I would call it, and therefore, and therefore there was support uh, across the board. So it's something that needs to be managed uh, so that, because the most difficult group, I would say, would be the politicians in our case, because they are the ones who can easily, um, you know, if they are against uh, uh, an idea, they can easily incite against, and once that is done, it will be very difficult to, to bring on board, uh, of course, the community. So it's something that I would say it's been a good lesson for us that, uh, you know, buying from the top is, is always uh, quite important. And on the second question of uh, what would be some of the important lessons from, from, from of course, uh, no shopping and what are some, of course, that may not have worked for us. Uh, some that we've seen that really would work and that have worked on. The first one that is of essence, although it's not working yet, is that transfer of solid waste management function from you know the government itself to the company so as to commercialize that function because at the moment whereas uh, youth groups and uh, uh, you know individuals are being allowed to do uh, solid waste collection i mean uh, picking and transportation you find that it's not being done in a structured manner that not everybody is you know having their waste collected some are willing to pay others are not willing to pay so it's like an option at the moment but then if that function was being transferred to the company so that the bill of solid waste is put with the bill of water and uh, sewer, then people will not have the option of, uh, you know, to pay or not to pay because it will be one bill coming at the end of the month. And it's something that we are very sure it, 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 it will work. The other thing that we saw and we is, is now working here is the issue of sorting of the waste and recovery of, you know, uh, materials. At the moment, we have quite a number of people at the dump site doing sorting and recovering material and it's being sold. Plastic waste being uh, sold to the uh, plastic manufacturers, metal, uh, wood, all uh, valuable materials that are, is being recovered. And something that we saw is quite effective actually also in Europe, that they are almost reaching a point where they have almost zero waste at, at the end of the day that's being disposed. So it's something that we've seen that it's of much value and it's something that we, could, we can also learn from. Thank you. I don't know, Tura, if you want to add something. Thank you so much, uh, Jimmy. So, uh, uh, no. Uh, I, no. Okay. No, I, I think I thank you. I think uh, 
we'll let uh, Samson uh, add from the Ugandan perspective. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are over time. So uh, if there's any further questions, I'd be happy to pick those up uh, and get some answers from the panel um, uh, by email. Um, so uh, I would like just to thank the panel uh, for being here. I think this painted a, a uh, colorful picture of how the exchange worked within the municipal partnership program. Concretely, what kind of experiences uh, you you can exchange and methods in order to to improve a project and to uh, to get a richer um, uh, richer outcome uh, at the end of the project. So with that, uh, uh, I'm going to hand over for final remarks. But I just want to say thank you on my side for everyone for attending and for the panel. And I leave final remarks uh, first to Mr. Johan Lidia and uh, finally to Mr. Peter Wilson. Thank you, Joel, and thank you for uh, all panelists that uh, contributed so well. And I think I, I myself learned new things from the different projects that uh, I thought I knew everything about. But that was really, really great. Thank you so much for the contribution. And uh, once again, thank you, Philip, for, for giving us this opportunity to share and to perhaps come a bit closer again. Uh, the initial phase was that we actually also had, uh, uh, so to say, an employee in, in uh, Mr. Carson, who was part of the team of ICLD, but then later on I met Nelson. So also thank you, Nelson, for, um, so to say, arranging in the first stage that we actually met also with Philip Osano and the team. And also thank you for giving us the opportunity to, to be part of, of uh, this collaboration. I just wanted to say in my final remarks is that this is the uh, this is not the end, not even beginning of the end. It's maybe the end of the beginning. So I would say, like Winston Churchill, there is a future for us, and I think this is also a golden opportunity to uh, explore further. And and I have reached out also to UNCDF when it comes to all the things I've heard that the good collaboration needs also some type of investment and to find the funds and the investments to do the thing when you have done your whole product of capacity building. It's also important and we need to join forces to make sure that the different municipalities also get the resources to do the last part in the project, meaning that you have, so to say, strengthened, you have been, been part of the project to actually have good ideas and, and know how to do things, but you need also the final part also to get some investments to make it done. Um, and my final word, I'm always quoting Nelson Mandela. I will do that today also. It always seems impossible until it's done. And with those words, I hand over to Philip. Uh, look forward to the collaboration in, in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Johan. This has been, um, can you hear me? We hear you well, we hear you well, continue. Yes, yes, Philip, we do. Ah, okay, <laughs> that, that's good. I was worried because I saw my, like my internet uh, is fluctuating, but I just wanted to thank you, uh, Johan. Um, I think this is a start of a great collaboration, particularly I also want to appreciate, you know, the work that has been put in by, by Joel and Romanos over the last uh, two, three weeks to just put this thing together. Um, I would not add much except to say that uh, one of the things that we not, uh, just from listening, of course, to the experiences of colleagues, um, um, is just the richness of um, lessons that we are now being exposed to. And, and I think this has been very great. I think one, one key area that I think could, could be um, an opportunity for us to you know, con strengthen collaboration would be around uh, documentation, you know, and, and you know, kind of capturing some of these lessons and making them a, a little more widely available for, for colleagues. And I would like actually also to just extend my appreciation also to, to Jimmy and, and to Samson and, and Tora for you know, sharing with us what, you know, what has been a very rich experience. We've learned a lot, I've personally really learned a lot. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping, of course, that uh, now, if I have the opportunity to visit your different cities, I would, I would, I would actually reach out and, and be able to meet you and see in person some of the the wonderful work that's going on. Mm -hmm. I, I also wanted to highlight one particular point that I think has struck me and uh, the, the the work that's going on in Entebbe around focus on on schools and and children and education for young people because for us also this is very critical. 
uh, many people might not appreciate the fact that you know Africa is not uh, just the youngest continent across the globe, but also that quite a large population of um, you know of, of 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 people in Africa are young people. Uh, I think about forty two percent, or they're about of uh, the one point two uh, plus uh, billion population in Africa is actually um, uh, you know below the age of fifteen. Um, and and so I think capacity, you know, engaging this kind of young people is very important. Um, and I think it relates to the whole topic that we're talking about: inclusive, inclusive governance. Do we consult enough? Do we make sure that you know we provide uh, allow enough voices to reach out to you know of the different critical groups, uh, particularly groups that might not actually have uh, space in the policy discussion? The young people mostly. Um, you know, uh, do not have that space. I think I, I really like that, uh, you know, there's a, a, a specific focus on, on schools and young people. And I think that's that's an area that we probably need to do a lot more on. Uh, other than that, I think, um, uh, as Johanna said, there's quite a number of things that we need to look into in terms of uh, the next steps. Uh, of course, obviously, from this discussion, waste management and, and you know dealing with waste is become seems to be a very critical issue that we need to continue focusing on. Of course, I would still emphasize how to look at the issues of climate action. That's very important, um, and we can of course we will continue this dialogue. Uh, but in 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 conclusion, I just want to thank everyone that's been able to uh, take time to attend this conversation and this dialogue, and I hope it has really been enriching. Other than that, I just want to say that um, I wish you all uh, a good week ahead. Thank you so much. And back to you, Joel. Thank you so much, uh, Philip and Yuana. Thanks, everyone, for uh, joining. I just want to wish you all a wonderful week and uh, see you either at this office or at the office in this first Stockholm. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, Thank you. Thank you. Bye.